But yeah, we'll uh, we'll keep that in mind. <laughs> Uh, why did you not plan anything, Pete? <laughs> and welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly Show. It covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin, that's Jordan, that's Pedro, and you at home, watching us live on Twitch, helping us form... Two canes! Do it. <laughs> this is a prototype Voltron. I'm proud of that. Oh I'm, my I, god! Listen, man, I'm production like, value on this show. I, I am, <laughs> I'm like a fucking four year old that just scribbled that shit on crayons, and like, motherfuckers got to put it on the icebox, man. Like, Ma- <laughs> Macromedia flash, motherfucker. I tried. I did all that in Da Vinci. Man. Okay. It'll get better. That's a prototype. So, um, yeah. Before we get started, we'd like to uh, play a little bit of catch up. We surprisingly spent time yesterday playing a game instead of sitting around for an hour after the uh, stream doing. Fuck all. Yeah, just talking shit. So, what have we been up to? I know, I, I've ran into a thing. Because it was, like, incredibly hot, and I wanted to get... I have the uh, Noctua Threadripper cooler, that N14 US YOLO swag burrito. And I wanted something that, you know, would keep it under 70 when it is 30 degrees in the studio, as it was two weeks ago, <laughs> and last week, and the camera's <laughs> dying three times. Because it's insulated. I'm like, okay. AIO options. We all know about the Lithtech, the Intermax, the one, two, and three, the ones that just die out of the question. The only reasonable one, the one that is not full of RGB barf. The other two are in a neck and neck race, man. Thermal take makes one that is shooting laser RGBs everywhere. Then um, Silverstone makes one that's even worse. Not only does it have it on the fans, it's got like a specialized uh, block that shoots more RGB barf out. So I think I'm going to buy. Fortunately, I remembered. Do you remember? It was like last year, maybe a year ago. um, It it was on Linus's channel. And um, he had this like crazy cooler that was like this this big, massive block. And it was a thermosiphon. I was like, oh, new technology and uh, cooling. That's interesting. Whatever became of that? Turns out they turned it into a real product. So I think I'm gonna pick one of those guys. I'm they're like 160 bucks. That's still like right in the price of an AIO. That, yeah, that, that, yeah. That, that's like I, I would pay that for a heatsink. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, and I'm gonna get for that kind of processor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just something to keep it cool. I don't overclock thread boopers as a production box, and I'm gonna buy one of the um, you know, because I already have a heat napkin on um Jackbox. I bought one just to test mm-hmm. one of those thermal pads, and I'm get one for uh, boom, set it, and then I have to worry about it again. That's pretty much all I've been. Oh, right. Uh, B for B. We were talking yeah, about yeah, was... how do corporations, single corporations meet? They beat B to B. Swipe up. <laughs> yeah. B, yeah, yeah B, 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 B for B. B for the... B, man. Uh, yeah, quick announcement. I found out that uh, our show on Wednesday, Weekly Daily Wednesdays, is on Amazon Music, to which I went, wait a minute. Does that mean we are? <gasps> like asp. Yes. Uh, the show is oh. too. So you, oh my God! You can tell Perplexa to uh, play us, and I think we'll, <laughs> give it'll... give us them Bezos bucks. Yeah, it, yep. it's free. Yeah. We're on Amazon. Jeffrey, if you want to, <laughs> J- Jeffrey, if you want to come on the show, you know, uh, you should to- you should totally come on the show. That, that's how. That, that's usually how it works, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when you're not busy uh, taking shower hooks off of your floor, <laughs> what else have you been to this week? <laughs> Uh, showering mostly. Uh, no, no, uh, last, last week of nurse duty. Um, so that, that, that's, that's good. I'm, I'm, I still, I still got to wake up early to walk the dog, but at the very least I don't have to do all the cooking and cleaning anymore. So that's all good. And yeah, that's kind of it. That's where like, I am not cut out to be a nurse. Like that is, (laughs) it is the most draining labor for me. Like my God. Um, I, so so yeah, like uh, that that's that's where most of my energy went this week. <laughs> <laughs> Trying not to snap. How about you, Pedro? Yeah, I uh, got a thing. Uh, it came in uh, oh, about right. three weeks after I originally ordered it, that's which not was bad. Uh, on my birthday. It's better than four years. And uh, yeah, it is. Uh, there we go. <laughs> it's a pine time, and it works. So what time is uh, it? It's 
Five uh, it is, Yeah, that time. <laughs> in the morning, it, it, if, it, if you're wondering. It is, is five, 5.18 or... 5.18. Well, it's either that or it's one fifty eight. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it is one fifty eight a.m. And uh, yeah, no, it uh, syncs up. You have a couple of options when it comes to apps uh, for your Android phone. Or if you're running a Pine phone, uh, there's a couple of Linux apps. One of them, Siglo, which was the one that I used on the desktop here to update the firmware, mm -hmm. which also works. Uh, it's, uh, it's available on the Pine phone now, and you can install it via Flatpak if you'd like. So that's all there. And is there the a batteries... Uh, I don't know if there's a snap, I, I, but uh, I, I only I only use snap. I'm on I'm incapable of installing <laughs> software any other way except for snap. I think you know after three days of um okay I got a back actual video use? Up, but I think when you hit that yeah it, it's changing numbers it's went from like fifty nine to forty nine uh, it is now hovering it's back between forty nine and fifty percent <laughs> it dropped ten percent from when you cut it on to yeah <laughs> it's, now it's, 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 trying, it is, it's trying to die it's 51 yeah <laughs> yeah it, it, it is dying rather than being featured on linux gamecast hey. it, yeah the um battery indication it's iffy but it is at around 50 percent. so for three days of use mm -hmm. that's not bad i get a real question that's everyone in the audience I'm, I'm, i gotta ask a question for everybody watching can you ssh into it no useless Useless. <laughs> Unlike can you wait, hold, hold on. Can you, can, you, can, can you tell that into it? Because I know you can tell that into the horse, but what you will get out of your, your console is not text. <laughs> it's something far, far fouler. It's the Steam Analytics. Update. Update. Oh, oh, the week. oh man. Percent, Hardware software percent. survey 2021. <laughs> this is for July, and we got good news, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Windows 10 64-bit drops. No, we're not talking about that. What we're talking about is when we come down here, we will see it has been a long road, long time. Shut up, Scott Bakula. 1% for the first time in <laughs> probably a couple of years. Like, no idea, no idea what could possibly have caused that. Curiosity, maybe people are getting excited. I One thing that I've definitely seen is some of our Fairweather Linux fans kind of showing up um, for the Game Gear party. They're excited about Linux again, which I think is necessarily a good thing. Yeah, um, if you, if you look at the breakdown, um, it looks like uh, it looks like Manjaro is kind of taking the lead here. Also, we're seeing a lot more increase in Ubuntu twenty o four or twenty one o four, which uh, means I guess people are updating their Ubuntu box. And but uh, if you scroll down to video memory, one thing that's get that's gotten a lot of a bump lately are machines with like what five early, earlier in the week was two hundred fifty six megabytes uh 512 megabytes this could this could be indicating um like virtual machines right people are running linux in a virtual machine to fuck around with it and given that manjaro numbers are coming up well it's not quite steam os 3.0 but it's probably the easiest way to install something resembling it without having to dig too deep into the arch wiki so hmm. <laughs> well pedro here's one question i got for you man do you think what are we going to be tracking this time next year once the game gear is out are we are we going to see the is Steam going to go Steam OS for tracking, or is it going to go for Arch? I think they with with the previous version of uh, Steam OS, it showed up at Steam as Steam OS until they stopped updating, and everyone else went, "Yeah, no, there's just no point in running that." They, they moved so to Gamera. Disappeared from the charts. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, Gamera apparently hasn't made it to the charts yet because, yeah, it stops at Linux Mint, which is, if you look at the Linux-only breakdowns, like 535%. Or, or they're just showed up, they're counted in the arch numbers. It could be, but that's the thing. It's Valve, so they're probably going to go, no, it's SteamOS 3.0. No, no, I'm, so I'm, I'm, that, I'm, ta I'm, talking, about, I'm talking about Gamera, not, not SteamOS. Oh, could be, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, remember that time yeah, that yeah, yeah. Um, Valve just straight up used a shrug emoji in an announcement? <laughs> <laughs> which, which time? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, th there's been a lot of that. But hey, uh, they're, they're actually fixing things, and this one is the new display patch uh, notes right in the downloads view, which if you've been using Steam for a while, chances are you saw the link to the, like, patch or release notes or news or something like that when you downloaded a game you clicked on it and you just get redirected to the generic uh linux uh, or the generic uh new releases or news thing that the developer had set up 
there was no specific news to that particular version. They were fixing that. Finally. It, it's only been, how long has Steam been out now? 17 years? Three, four weeks. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I really liked about that, man, um, what's his name uh, from SteamDB, straight up took a shot at him on Twitter. He's like, how many years have I been doing that? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It, it, it took them a while and I was actually going to blame the developers because, you know, I'm sure Valve has a lot of functionality that developers aren't using because they care more about the money than actually making use of everything that seems provides to them. 30% cut and whatnot. Uh, the, um, but no, uh, as it turns out, this was Steam's fault. They were not allowing people to specifically link a particular release build to the patch notes so that when you downloaded that patch, you could see exactly what, so what changed. what you're telling me, Pedro Mateus, is we just need to sit back and find out how it's going to be abused, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, like, click, click hijacking and shit? Yeah, like, <laughs> come, come, come to my other random website that has a Bitcoin miner yeah. running in JavaScript. Yeah, now, like, do you think uh, It Valve, just automatically redirects you there. <laughs> we'll ever get around to releasing um, maybe in, you got to be in the latest client beta if you want to get hold of this, but it is there. But if Valve would release something that would tell you, because um, this is going to be a very big issue, maybe it's something we're going to be seeing in the future, immediate future, is the level of compatibility of a game with Proton. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe they'll be like, I, you know, I, I, you gotta wonder, like Valve is aware of Proton DB's existence. I wonder what kind of like back channel communications are going on there. And, and maybe I, there'll be something. They did, they did say in the, um, Gabe gear announcement that they plan to have all the games working by the time that it releases. So I think that they're well, thinking, Oh, maybe we don't need that. Well, on that front, uh, Proton GE six four two took so, longer than I was planning. All right, yeah, um, yeah. But on that front, uh, Proton GE six fourteen uh, dash two is out. This is the link for six dot one. Six dot two is just a hot fix for a couple games. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, one one there. Well, well I mean, the, the changes here: uh, Final Fantasy fourteen, Eve Online, some fixes for uh, Metro and LA Noir, which the hot fix actually on properly fixes um, some stuff for uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. But the big thing that this release does, and Eggy could not tell you how, is it runs back for blood. No, he, he knows exactly <laughs> yes. what's going on there, man. <laughs> yeah. But like, uh, but yeah. to, to, the, to, to, to the point previously, like, well, clearly Proton G or some incarnation of Proton, not necessarily Proton proper, but like GE is capable of running games that aren't even released like on launch day, like there were like norm normally we'll see like um like a patch or two a week later after a game comes out, be like, hey, we're enabling this. But lo and behold, we tested this uh, yesterday and it's, uh, it back worked for blood. Mm -hmm. We're playing around with it. And uh, yeah, we were able to get it up and running, which I thought was uh, kind of interesting. And, uh, you know, Pedro's like, yeah, it worked. Yeah, it worked. And everyone was happy. And <laughs> Renault was like, how's this work? And <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My, 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 my theory and a Strider had something similar was I was pretty sure they had like uh easy anti cheat in either like disabled or permissive mode. Cause they're like collecting data. Oh, I, I don't think I, I straight up trolled uh Frenchie yesterday when I released our video. I was like with easy anti cheat question mark immediately in the description. I'm like, Hey man, it's probably enabled. It's not enforcing it immediately in discord. He's like, but you need to I'm like read, read the description. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like and I, I like there there can't be any hacks for this game out. It's literally up for like four days before mm. they go back into the closed beta. Mm -hmm. So oh, speaking see, of that, uh, if you're watching us live, we're gonna be playing around with that in the after shows. And so we like yeah, to so get you, the, you like, might want to download releases. this. You might want to download Back for Blood and this Proton release. Yes. The link to this we is in our show notes. Know it works. Carrot Hearts new games. Okay. Yes, co-op roguelike with online multiplayer. Color me intrigued. This is where you play cute little bunnies that slaughter each other. Okay. Um, oh, I thought you were playing other. that on Thursday. No, that 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 is also cute little bunnies slaughtering each other. There, there's many games in that genre. It's a pretty broad one, uh, but it's in early access. You could pick it up for eleven bucks. Um, and it is a co-op with uh, two-player co-op or uh, roguelike with two-player co-op. 
Yeah, on, online co-op, mm-hmm. which is which is very nice. Um, the other thing here is there's like emphasis on position and control. So there's like items and powers you can use to fuck with the terrain, which seems kind of interesting. I like games that do that. However, you scroll down to the those uh, system requirements. Okay. It's a 2D game. Why do you need a GTX 480? Like, I know that's not the top <laughs> of the line anymore, but like, it seems it seems a little excessive. Or maybe uh, an HD 5870. Yeah. I mean, this is. Okay. Uh, Probably just to make make sure, man. It's like this doesn't work with my Hercules graphic CGA adapter. So yeah. it's a 750 Ti is the minimum requirement there, which eh, you know, <laughs> it's. But again, it's a 2D game. Like really, mm. I, the, the 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 min spec is a little more uh, generous with a uh, Intel IGP. But yeah, yeah uh, and speaking, the, speaking of the game uh, has been out for a while. Uh, it's just that the Linux support got added with the new patch. Which, if this is only yes. update two. Uh, and they, the original release was in 2020. Uh-huh. It's called Game and- Gear Pedro. That's why. <laughs> yeah. If you're wondering. I just say, what are you saying? A a what are you implying? Gap there. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Uh, Pedro at LinuxGameCast.com. Uh, he will always be upset with you if you release your game on Linux because he's Pedro. <laughs> in, indeed. Well, speak, it was more of the of delays Roblox. between the updates. Yes, uh, big, big roguelike that actually came out of Early Access this week. Wait, it's, hang on, uh, hang Jupiter on, Hell. hang on, Pedro. So you must be irate at Metro Exodus. Um, I haven't played it in a while, so I don't really care about Metro Exodus. <laughs> I mean, it was a long time before we got that Linux port. <laughs> it was, and uh, they did do the epic exclusive thing, so yeah, that pissed me off at the time. Huh? Now I just don't care. <laughs> Time. Go figure Thanks out. for making your Linux uh, ports developers. Don't listen to this um, strumpet. All right. Jupiter Hell. Yes. Uh, it uh, it has had been in early access for a long, long time, but it's actually out now. And uh, I think it, they said it was like nine years uh, total development time since uh, they started working in earnest uh, at Jupiter Dante Hell. Station? It is yeah, not yeah. supposed to be here today. I'm just saying, it takes a long time to file the serial numbers of Doom 3. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it is very much a sequel to uh, Doom the Roguelike. It's just that they almost got sued by Bethesda because of calling it Doom, despite, you know, prior art not counting anymore, apparently. But yeah, uh, I played it on Tuesday for the uh, the stream, and <laughs> I was looking at the release notes to see what they changed, and one of them goes, uh, rocket launchers deal impact damage and splash splash. So, okay, rocket launchers go splash splash. Uh, I <laughs> deliberately avoided playing this until it was out of early access, because I very much liked uh, Doom the Roguelike, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna wait till it's out, and uh, we're throwing chairs at it, so... A stick around. Mm. So this yes. next game is its namesake is Pedro. Yes, uh, <laughs> <laughs> effectively. Yes, <laughs> kind of fancy, kind of fancy, but it's still trashy. So yeah, <laughs> very trashy. Uh, I am the trashiest one of Linux Gamecast. In any case, Death Trash Friend? is um, <laughs> it's uh, it's out in early access, and it is uh, the other game that came out on August fifth. And yeah, it is a uh, hipster Did you pixel just figure out how with, to use a calendar this week or is it the watch? Uh, yes. Yes. All right. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, no, it is a hipster pixel uh, fallout with real time combat instead of being turn based like the original fallouts. And it is it is really good. If you didn't play the demo before uh, during the Steam summer thing that you got all the demos. Ah, yes. that's where it, oh, the demo's still available if you want to fuck around with it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it, if you liked what you saw, you can purchase it Aww. now. It's like uh, 17 pounds here. Somebody needs to water the squid. <laughs> I want to Yeah, no, the hug. Flesh Kraken is, uh, it just wants friends. Flesh it wants Kraken. friends to come and join him. Yeah, that that's the Flesh Kraken. All I'm going to say about <laughs> this, man, is if the uh, first DLC for this game is not titled Full Metal Panda, I'm going to be disappointed. <laughs> yeah, uh, ho- hopefully, because it's it's still in early access. They have co-op multiplayer. They need to add online multiplayer. It's impossible. We've been over this. It's millions of dollars to add online game. multiplayer. 
You can ask Epic for money. They'll probably give it probably. to you. <laughs> but then you have to go ah, well, 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 hold, hold on. We'll, we'll get to that because they may not have much money to give anymore. So. You know, one thing, one thing that's always bothered me about uh, retro hipster pixel games is they never get the sprite size right because you remember playing back on your Mega Drive or your NES and, you know, little tiny fucking characters. Our next game looked at that and went, challenge accepted. Yep. And... Uh, it's aptly called the cork. So, you know, <laughs> about Por- Portuguese yeah, jokes. The, <laughs> well, the, uh, this one, they, they describe it as a 2d action RPG with a focus on exploration. Blah, 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 blah. And, uh, I lo- I looked at the, like, um, next bit is like draws inspiration from classic Metroidvania platformers with a heavy emphasis on Vania. I like that. And the deliberate challenging combat. Of so Souls-like. tiny. So it, it's do you it's get a mushroom or some shit without so the edge like it's bigger? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. This Simon's Quest reboot looks kind of interesting. Uh, cork. Yeah, what no, a horrible it, night for it, a curse. The way that they describe it is, it's basically, oh yeah, so it is just. Salt and Sanctuary, but no edgy art style by um, I know Sky no. Studios. I, okay. I, I mean, this is like Salt and Sink, but it looks fun. <laughs> I don't know. That was like the first full series that I did uh, for yeah, like the I, weekly I, streams. I, I mean, I don't yeah. think this game requires you to be a high functioning sociopath in order to enjoy it. It might. Possibly. Yeah, I don't want to sell it short. Um, <laughs> you can't play it yet. It's coming soon. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Unbound. <laughs> World we Apart. Stand. Worlds Apart. This is our last new game for this week, but man, it's pretty. It is pretty. I got to give it that. I can't, can't say it's ugly. You no, get to that, summon that, that portals. Sure. Not the fun kind of portals. These are just the expandy portals, man, because you got to deal with vicious beasts and puzzles and friendship and shit and platforms. You know, hand-drawn worlds unraveling all around you with a deep narrative. That's not full of Diet Dr. Pepper. Nay, it's full of mysteries. You know what? Um, I'm watching the video for audio listeners, and it looks like the outside of like the uh, Hollow Knight butterfly or um, Ori butterfly jump wings, your main mechanic is you can make a sphere around you that changes what phase of the world that you happen to be in. Now, I do like a good Metrovania, you know, puzzle game and all that, but you got to mix that business up. I'm watching this trailer. It's just that same mechanic over and over and over. You know, something like Ori, something like Hollow Knight, what I was just talking about, they got all kinds of right on that because there's, by the time you get halfway through either of those games, you're a fuck mothering ninja hammering on your controllers, doing all that kind of weird shit. Because when you come back and play either of those games, like three weeks later, you can't fucking do it anymore. Like, fuck, I forgot how to do all this. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, think a, I think a lot of the gameplay variability here is like the, the portals that you open change the world in like different ways. So there's, mm-hmm. a, there's a management part of like, oh, I need to go into the fire world, to the ice world, to the dark world, to the light world or something like that so that I can get through this particular platforming segment, which is kind of neat. It's uh, it's a neat twist on the uh, is it 1999 neat? <laughs> I don't yeah. know if it's 1999 neat. Um, I, I don't know. That's that's kind of the upper limit of like what I would say that a game like this should be appropriately priced at. So maybe. Um, well, it, I, de- it definitely has the it definitely has the looks. So like the production I, value. Is I, I immediately go. That's five dollars more than Hollow Knight. <laughs> yeah, but not not everything yeah. is Hollow Knight though. Oh, I'm well aware <laughs> of that. Well aware. Of- <laughs> oh, hang on. You can get Hollow Knight right now for seven forty nine. Buy that. Oh. Uh, while you're waiting mm-hmm. on this, um, that is a very actually a very good deal for Hollow Knight. But uh, the mechanic actually reminds me of a snapshot where you actually took a picture of a portion of the map and then moved it to another map. But you combine that with like the uh, phase shifting in Guacamelee. It's like, oh, a gravity is reversed in some of the bits. So you need to shift between phases and open up the uh, portal type of situation that they have going on to like change the gravity and get across things. Mm-hmm. That's. Ah. I I, it, part of me is interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, for, for me, for me, it boils down to this is a Twitch platformer, which means I will hate it because I'm not. I me and Twitch platformers do not get along. Well, that's why you can use our YouTube account to play it. Yes. Yeah. So well, we lied to you last week. Uh, well, I, it's a, not so much lies. We we made a very confident statement with no evidence to Collusion. back it up. We got uh, together a week beforehand and we're like, ah, oh, we're going to trick the audience. Yeah. <laughs> so it had nothing ha, to do you, with the thing. You've been that deceived. They tweeted. 
<laughs> yes. So, uh, Total War, uh, Total Warhammer Two: The Silence and the Furry is available, uh, or uh, and it is uh, it's the latest DLC for Total Warhammer Two. Uh, you can get it on Linux. Uh, I guess. I guess. Yeah. Here's here's the thing. We, we were talking last week about Feral saying like, oh well, the the new Total War game is not coming out on Linux. This one was probably already in the pipe. I, I think like maybe we might get a couple more. And again, this is all baseless speculation. For all I know, Farrell's like, yeah, we have the we have the um, we have the Steam Pad contract for like every new Triple M game for like the next three years. For all we know, but um, it, it's it seems like we might be getting a couple more of these Warhammer DLCs, but we're not going to be getting new stuff from. Mm. It. But that's it. It's nice of them to actually put this out and let people who are into Total War enjoy. I guess the the Skaven. Uh, what, 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 it gets, it, um, adds Lizardmen and Beastmen. Those Yay, are, those are the two impact new, for Total uh, War. I don't know. I mean, I guess the contract yeah. maybe wasn't over. Uh, who knows? But mm, one thing yeah. to remind yourself, uh, these games now require Vulcan. So yes. I, I, don't play, don't play it on your four series. Yes. <laughs> or five series for that matter. Yeah, no, I, it, it did wonders. Like, did Sega's lawyer go? It's like, uh, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> Well, no. I, I mean, like this, this, this is too soon. So, like, this was literally they had this done. They made the announcement about the new Total War game. Moral of they the had story this is this: don't rely on the fucking Twitter PR person for what's going <laughs> on in the operation. Yes, yes. <laughs> also, also, maybe take what we say with a big old grain of salt. Big We're grain. not perfect. Like at least six inches. Uh, yeah. One year of hell. That's out, and I'm very happy because it. I downloaded it. And I went, holy fuck, this thing's $34 now. Maybe it's always been, but the seizure sparkles are gone. Yes. Heck dot, uh, AKA uh, Hellpoint. Uh, they have, uh, they have the new anniversary edition out or rather the, uh, new anniversary patch out. It's been out for a year now. Uh, well, at least out of early access and to celebrate, they have a, uh, they have a tournament coming up. So if you want to be the best, uh, Cenobite, uh, you might be able to win a free copy of the DLC. Although my money is on Jerry. I think he's the best Cenobite. <laughs> it's got an arena though, bro. Come on. Look. Yeah, it is you, very is much going Chief? to be. No, you PvP can be the Michelin guy. All the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, oh, look, it's Sauron. Yeah. <laughs> See, there's this little I mean, you thing. already look like Sauron. <laughs> The no, moment no, you put you, on you any like kind a, of armor, you look like Sauron. You, you, you look like Hellraiser if, like, he just sat on the couch and played Sega Genesis for three hundred years. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, it is. Uh, there's going to be a PvP event, and there are some prizes. And uh, when I saw this, like, okay, let's see how many people are actually playing the game. There's about sixty people on average playing the game concurrently. That's so. not bad. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, like, that's going to be <laughs> given <laughs> all the shit that's available on Steam. Yeah, for for an indie game, that's pretty good considering it's been out for a year, and the the media cycle has passed over it. Everyone's mm -hmm. playing Back for Blood now, clearly. So, <laughs> well, it is only going to be out till what tomorrow? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, I, I I got corrected. It's next Monday that it's over. Ah, okay. Use, use. I thought I thought I thought it was this Monday. See, I don't know how to use a calendar. Oh, I learned how to use it. one this week. <laughs> <laughs> PVP, Pedro, you need to hop. I thought Pedro would be all over this because he loves his PVP and his Dark Souls games when it's red versus blue and they run around and roll around and see who can drink the most before they die. Stop describing a jujitsu <laughs> tournament, then. I, listen, listen. This is what Dark Souls players call fun and engaging combat: is doing is the, the rules and seeing who can drink more. That's it. Yeah, same, with, yeah. Same, same, with, like same with your average poker athlete, with athlete. swords. It's rolling around and drinking shit. And the first one who dies loses. <laughs> That's all it is. It's so, about so, baiting so what, the attack so, so hold, that you hold, can get a few. So hold on. What, what, I'm hearing, they what, I'm hearing, what I'm hearing is that Fred Durst is the champion Dark Souls. Player. 100%. He keeps rolling, 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 rolling. <laughs> the reason why? Practice makes perfect. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you are struggling in Dead Cells, uh, they have a brand new update that might help you out. Uh, so there's a practice mode update. Uh, there's a training mode that you can uh, hone. So if you're having trouble with a particular type of enemy or uh, a certain boss, but not the secret bosses, uh, then you can mm -hmm. practice against it and try and hone your, strat your uh, strategy down. That's one thing in like a lot of these combat roguelikes I don't like is, or I, I have a problem with is like, if you're struggling on an area, if you're struggling on an enemy, then you have to play th everything up to that point in order to like practice against it. So they're giving you an out. They're giving you a way to actually like 
figure out figure out your 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 method of defeating the boss before you actually have to go and suffer permadeath for so fucking. So do you think they're up, intentionally nice. limiting their gifts to 256 colors because they want to be retro or they just don't know better? I think Both. it's just the space so you, that it doesn't take three minutes to load the updates. <laughs> Kirby's ball sack. <laughs> We're just looking at some of the fan art. Uh, you know, Dead Space is not Dead Space. What's the name of this one? Uh, something Dead Cells. Dead Cells, yes. Ah, is that right? It's a fun game. I just don't like the uh, RNG, well, the uh, procedural. Like, ah, oh, this is all different. I don't know. Yes. And uh, the, the bosses are usually in the same places. It's just the bits in between the bosses that are Which different. was fun because and one time I got started with like a fucking lightning whip and I just walked around and just wrecked everything. Like, okay. Yeah. Well, nope. I, and, I mean, uh, yeah, it, maybe now I can actually beat the uh, the third boss by practicing a little bit. <laughs> no, <laughs> because that maybe. one's still kicking my ass. I, I mean, if you, if you want handcrafted levels, go play at the cork. I guess handcrafted levels. It's news that are coming up, but uh, before we do that, as usual, we need to put the brakes on and thank you. Why? Because for some reason, you keep thinking that this is a good idea. Fred Durst. So, Fred, Durst. <laughs> Fred Durst thinks it's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. And that guy knows what he's talking about. The chocolate you know, starfish uh, uh, and the hot dog flavored uh, Estes flasks. If, if, <laughs> that yeah, if, if, you want, if, if you want to give us a lifetime supply. I of thought there was something on Pedro's face. So I had to turn around and look and it was just Pedro's face. <laughs> yes, what? my face is on my face. <laughs> you thought you thought it was his face, but it turned out it was secretly its fa- his face. So actually, actually, you know, you know what? Quit I got calling a, I got Pedro an it. <laughs> Fund our LGC remake of Face Off. We're gonna try and hire Nicolas Cage. I don't want. We're, we're gonna have Pedro play John Travolta. It's gonna be it's gonna be great. Head on over to patreoncom slash to make that happen. Become a Patreon. Um, you can get in for as low as a buck a week. That for gets you access to the Discord channel. Technology news. Yes. <laughs> and, fa- and and updates on our face off remake starring Pedro Mateus. Do you, do you want a piece of that cage? How about your cage? Yeah. <laughs> it's too many cages. Uh well we're we're spoiled for choice. You're spoiled for choice too with the number of options God you can now Billy Corbett's our Patreon sure ones. Yeah. Um but yeah, uh do- dollar gets you ask access to Discord, so does something to us on Twitch. Gets you ask. Uh, which ask X. Ask, ask, ask. We got a th- we got a thing Basil for uh resubbing. He's yes, got several months of resub. Um 19 and, whole yeah, months. Uh, 19 whole months. Told you. 19 right whole months. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, a little bit more, you get access to the show notes and the video version of the pre pre super chosen, which is pretty cool, which you can listen into uh, if you're on discord, uh, seven 30 Eastern standard time on Saturdays. We're taught, we talked about what the suicide squad, we talked about music videos. Spoiling and... it. Yes, we did. And, uh, you know what? Yeah. I, I like some of the bosses that just take advantage of it because they'll log into the uh, pre pre super chosen discord and live and they'll be like muted both I'm like yeah <laughs> just just, yeah. just letting you know be like uh, flex mm-hmm. i'm down with that indeed uh but you can get a uh, little bit more money on the patreon you can get access to our show notes uh issue corrections comment shout insults at us in google docs fashion if discord is a little too high tech for you and you know what we got we got lgc merch store dot linux gamecast.com we can we got lonely penguin t-shirts we got hellhawks coffee mugs and stickers and shirts and you you two can walk around like a giant mayonnaise tin and confuse and enrage your neighbors but and then when they ask you about it you can slap a chair sticker on their face and be like what i don't chair? know i am always always perplexed i think uh last time uh i i saw that rohit was like yeah i was wearing it to the zoo and I'm like really did I, I guess that's a good way to make sure nobody nobody gets near you like I don't, even, I don't want to know that. <laughs> Linux? Like, like, yeah, I, 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 I don't, don't know what that is, so I'm just going to back away slowly. <laughs> I'm, I'm still a little weirded out that I'm in, uh, anyone who wears that shirt in public has me in their cleavage. Right? I like the use me. The, the use me shirt is pretty good. Well, I think you, you can get away one, with yeah. wearing that in public. Yeah, I, I, wore, I wore one. I wore that one to scale. So <laughs> that was. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, yeah, Franka files, all that stuff. Um, we got yeah, all we of our merch. Them? reasonably priced too i don't we're not trying to screw you on that because and it's good stuff it's not like the paper thin ones that you can send through send yeah. through yes send the, the uh photons through photon torpedoes <laughs> um we, you, you can buy us a photon torpedo if you want to go to our uh, wish zones if you go to linux no they can i've been over that no, so i've tried so, 
You can get them in Canada. You just can't get them in the States. Goddamn region like it, photon torpedoes. Yeah. You know, you know, it's that three months waiting list to see if you're qualified to own a photon torpedo. Um, <laughs> we, 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 don't, we don't have that in Canada. Um, yeah. Uh, Do you we, think you would buy it? Like, would, would, would you fuck around with like a black market photon torpedo? You'd be like, nah, I'm good. No, no would, would, would not fuck around with Off that. Off of the back of Jeff's oh, vans, no. like, oh, photon torpedo. Here we here. go. He, is, it, 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 fell, what, it fell off the back of a bird of prey. This is what we get yeah, it like. down to. Would you get a photon torpedo from AliExpress or Wish? <laughs> oh, no. Because that one definitely fell off the back of a bird of prey. That's, uh, that's uh, not good. Uh, but yeah, um, if, if you buy stuff off our Wish Zone, you can send us a note. We'll read it for you live on the air. If you send Ven some stuff, you can get your name uh, obscured behind his head. Uh, Pedro, you have someone you got to think. I do. Don't you? Shake that. Uh, <laughs> shake it, shake it. Uh, one of the things I had in my um, wish list was this particular microphone arm. And uh, one Linux Nuru decided, uh, you know what? You need that. So he did write the message. So uh, I shall read it. Have Nori throw a cream pie in your face on LGC or LGBT. <laughs> <Yeah. LGD. laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, hashtag snowball. That's you, know what? Say. you know what? That, that just cruised by without any problems on Wednesday. Yep. <laughs> oh, so I did pass oh, no. this along to Nori. So since she's not as contractually obliged as we are, it'll be up to her whether or not she wants to cream pie my face. But yeah, we'll uh, we'll keep that in mind. <laughs> Uh, why did you not plan anything, Pedro? Wham. You failed. I showed up in fucking lizard makeup, man. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, I uh, again, I passed this along to Dory, so uh, it may be coming in the future. <laughs> oh, it, it's definitely coming, all right. <laughs> oh, okay. Like we said, all right, let's talk we, about we promised you we were educational. Thank you for letting us uh, do this each and every week, and uh, yeah, keep being awesome. Yeah, 3D effects, we talked about that. Last week, <laughs> dial it back, dial it back. <laughs> How can we after that? <laughs> I was just waiting. I knew what was coming. I, just, I wasn't sure how you were going to handle it. Um, now we know. <clears throat> so check this out. Last week, there was a tweet from 3DFX official, a thing that showed up. I'm like, hey, man, we're doing 3DFX. 3DFX is back. It's been 20 years, but uh, we're going to be releasing new cards, um, audio equipment, mobile phones. And, um, you know, all of us, kind of like the rest of the internet, we, we, we rolled back and went, nah, but let's, let's see where this goes. And um, I wasn't alone in saying, man, I hope if this is just somebody, you know, doing a funny, doing a prank, I hope they've got like everything two factored and uh, they've done like their own background checks. I'm like, am I findable online? Because some motherfuckers are going to be out for my ass if I'm... You know, getting hooked yeah. up. Yeah. Turns how, out. Yeah. How, that, yeah go. Thrilling conclusion. <laughs> not 3D effects has been taken over uh, because, uh, yeah, it, it was abandoned. This is what showed up. You know, this is what I said. I hope this kid has two factor all the things because this this tweet right here came out uh, like two days ago. And this was like the big announcement. And it's like, follow ATI Parity as this account will no longer be in use tomorrow morning. Hi, it was all a joke, you guys. Bye, bye. And a few minutes after that, the account was like abandoned and uh, somebody has just take, taken it over. And don't mind me, I've just cleaned this handle because I don't want to be played again. Account created by Errol Wright, yeah. which, uh, hmm. Okay. Yeah. Hope, hope, hope yeah. is the cruelest dagger to stab someone in the back with. But to, like, I, I the, do the people bring, wanted yeah. it to be real. Even the ATI parody, though, I had to go check that out. Apparently, that was even too spicy at this point. <laughs> too, too, <laughs> he yeah. created a third one, too. Uh, for a moment there, there was like an extra tweet that he'd replied to on the ATI parody ones. Like, oh, he's doing it again. And it was some other dead tech account. So, yeah, he's just going around squatting on Twitter handles. Uh, that one, end well. I, I don't think he is now. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, think, I think he's in hiding. Yeah, if he's smart, he <laughs> he's, he's in, investigating caves in Afghanistan to go hide in for a while. Uh, mm -hmm. This is 
that is playing with fire, man. You're getting people's hopes up and we, nobody can get video cards and everyone desperately wants another player in the uh, GPU manufacturing. So, wrong hornet's nest to poke. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Of course they the, got death threats, uh, Mir. It's the internet. What? <laughs> you do something, yeah. you get a death threat on the internet. That's well, kind of how it works. And, and I mean, like, <laughs> it, it is the internet. Anyone can say anything and back it up with a tweet that looks official-ish. But, you know, mm-hmm. here, here, here it is. <laughs> the, 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 mor- the moral of the story is don't give people hope. It's not, it's not don't give hope. nerds hope. That That's the bigger one. <laughs> Some yeah, emotions let, let, let be are not so worth tangoing with. So, yeah, that's our unfortunately not so thrilling conclusion to uh, what happened with our 3D effects not being a thing. But, Jordan, you were talking about, like, hey, if, you know, if somebody's, like, thinking about it marketing-wise, hmm? Yeah, because like there's ve- like look at that. Look at look at the reaction. Look at the coverage. There is very clearly a desire for something like this to exist. Mm-hmm. So if you are a, if you if you're like Power VR or one of these like Chinese GPU manufacturers, Savage. you might want to look at this Savage and go, S3. yeah, yeah. Just mm-hmm. look at look at it and go, hmm. Savage name S- recognition. Savage desire S three D effects, <laughs> and they can make it a kitty cat. Hmm. <laughs> It needs to be neon pink. Hey man, uh, Gamers Next is a buy one. Yeah, yeah, uh, maybe. Um, I, I mean, that's kind of his job, though. It? So, <laughs> uh, Jill knows one hundred percent. I'm knows. just saying, we'll man, like, if it's going to be a that. slow month for news, get a Kitty Cat GPU and review it. Yeah, one yeah. of the waifu ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it works. Wait, but- do, do do the waifu ones have like anime boobs on the fans that spin? No, but they smell weird. <laughs> Yeah, the, the the last one came like impregnated with perfume. <laughs> impregnated. Yeah, that's a verb. That's a that's a word. Adjective. There we go. That's English. So we are not done I, I with our Twitter adventure because PlayStation Three has got it's it's learned a new trick. Oh yeah, it can FSR. It FSR is all the way to a hundred percent. Well, it's FSR. Basically, it does the upscaling, and then you can set the uh, contrast adaptive sharpening to whatever value you'd like. And RPCS3 now has it. And uh, the one game that I have on PCS RPCS3 is uh, Demon Souls. So I just lowered the uh, scaling down to 100%, which the game just shows up at 720p at that point. And then enabled FSR upscaling, and I posted a screenshot on Discord, and it looks really good it's not as good as their internal scaler but the performance is noticeably better man i I wish we had the technology to have (laughs) things like that for the show i i did not post a link but not not even (laughs) no no (laughs) use your imagination everyone use your imagination i could do that right (laughs) (laughs) hold on let, 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 let me use my dungeon master powers imagine if you will a gtk window with a Dark Souls screenshot. I do got a real question. I got a real so question. Crazy. How come, like, the settings menu Demon. looks like fucking Souls. near automatic tomato? Because, uh, just, that's, because that's, that's one style. of the skins, that's one of the default skins that RPCS ah, really comes with, is the okay. Your Ha yeah. one. Your Ha. All right. One, yeah. <laughs> uh, one thing, though, um, because uh, RPCS 3 actually does have support for um, the PS3D stuff, which is pretty neat, because, like, you could wear, like, the one set of polarized lenses and you could do like split screen, but everyone's just looking at the one big screen. Yeah. There, 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 there's, 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 there was some neat stuff that's not supported here. There's no way to actually do it. Really? Um, Pedro? Yeah, like, you give and you take no, away. Man. Jesus. <laughs> oh, geez, just, man, my Lord. In the wrong place. Um, but yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 de- I'm definitely interested to see like what kind of performance bump this will uh, result in, especially when running games that like higher the native resolution. Cause that's one of the big things they use uh, RPCS three for. Um, so what the hell am I yeah. looking at, Matthias? That is it's, it's um, FSR Demon Souls uh, at uh, 720p default rendering, but upscale to 2560 by 1440 on your PS3 emulator with FSR. Do you, do you have the Do you have the comparison with the default scaler? Uh, no. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that, uh, then that's moving the FSR on. <laughs> Yeah. Just in case, on. I didn't take uh, one with the default Just scaler. in case you were possibly confused that we knew what the hell we were doing or were competent in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Boom! Right there. All right. No, yeah. Um, flying, flying elbow. Good note. Yeah. Summer of code? Yeah. Uh, Google Summer of Code. Hi. You may have heard of it. If, yeah. 
if you uh, if you have uh, not used uh, heard of Google Summer of Code, it's basically a thing that Google sponsors. They'll give projects money to hire students to fat, pad out the resumes by contributing to open source projects. So uh, Godot has a couple of uh, things going on. Five specifically, uh, they have a DAP backend for debug for remote debugging, which uh, basically allows you to uh, connect via a console and then issue commands to the game, so you don't have to all tab back and forth. It's nasty. Uh, pseudo localization, which basically turns regular letters into accented letters. There you have a couple of use cases for that. Uh, in b- in better soft body dynamics, better graph layout in visual script and visual shader editors and a command palette for the editor, which is all little small quality of life improvements for the editor um, that, you know, it, they, there's definitely benefit, but if you're a student who needs to like work on something that's attainable, these are small goals that allow that you could like reasonably meet in four months. Um, so yeah, go read the progress reports on their blog. Uh, if they're doing anything you're interested in, this is all open source, so you can definitely go help them out and maybe get some resume padding for yourself. So you said I can just um, do a lot of like pull requests for typos and shit. <laughs> no, yeah, just fix all the indents <laughs> and then say I contributed to an open source project. I, I'm, I, I heard pad my. Um, <laughs> Like, yeah, I've committed to the Linux kernel a couple of times. Yeah, don't don't, don't look. Yeah. All right, that's cool. It's always well, good. Well, it was it was University of Minnesota that was doing that, right? Yeah. And then they were like, "Oh yeah, we wrote yep. a security paper on that." <laughs> Being a little malicious about it. That's good. I love seeing all the stuff coming out of um, Godot Engine and just how it's grown over the years with its capabilities and um, performance. And it's just a cool project to just be along with it the entire time. And uh, yeah. What is uh, Athenium? Athenium. 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 I don't know. However you want to say it. It is a open source Steam like client that just gives you all of the uh, open source games like your super tux cards and your super tuxes and whatever the heck else. The uh, you could just open it up, download it, install it. Uh, the, the it's available as a flat pack. It, or you can just build it yourself if you'd like. Uh, I have actually been using it when we threw chairs at uh, Hedge Wars and um, Super Tux Cart. That's what I use to actually download the games because it just makes it that easy. And, well, uh, a couple of versions ago with version 2.0, I think it was, they introduced a new UI and everyone complained about it, rightly so, because it was shit. If you wanted to see the actual games that you had installed, you had to go to search first and then tick the box that said install games only. And that's how you could see your installed games. But yeah, they they reverted uh, they reverted back to the simpler UI style, which makes a hell of a lot 100%. more sense. One hundred percent. This is return to form after <laughs> jumping <laughs> that little bit of shark. And it's always good when you see an open source project kind of roll back. And like, hey, we're listening to our users and not actively fighting with them, especially when it comes to UI <laughs> stuff. Man, I'm glad that's we're been not, simplified. No. <laughs> Hopefully, it's going to get some of the bugs ironed out as well. And uh, check it out. No plans. Uh, that's one of the things that I saw when posted in the Reddit thread, and people were talking about it and asking about it. Like, hey, man. Uh, is there any plans to like maybe let us sell some games in there? He's like, ah, no plans yet. Doesn't want to turn into. I think that to put a point on that is what he said uh, almost verbatim was, I don't want to. If you find a way to allow me to do that without becoming a payment processor, I'm all for it. Yeah, there, there's there's also like it's it, Athenium is basically a front end for FlatHub anyways. So if like there would have to be some sort of middle layer there to like actually handle charging and whatnot. Or have like a separate flat hub repository. It would be it would be a lot. <laughs> it would basically be making a new Steam. Mm-hmm. It, it would be making Desura. You would be making Desura like, all over again. And how about we don't, don't, want that. don't don't use flat packs or snaps and just be be normal. <laughs> I mean, flat packs are fine. they give you the option. Snap. You can build it yourself or find the, uh, if your distribution packages. Flat it, packs are awesome once repos. you knock enough security <laughs> holes through them to make them no better or worse than anything else. Yeah. Right. I mean, I mean, just give if, if you, flat if using flat packs to for, your home folder. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I just use flat packs for like one-off games. I don't have to do any real work. App with them. images, but app images. If you if you if you really want to get uh, your hands dirty with some code on Dungeon Z. Dungeons. Uh, yeah, it's a browser-based MMO. Um, oh. They're uh, entirely open source. And the, the goal of this project is really cool. So this is supposed to be an ongoing project that people are act- can actively contribute to. So that uh, if you are a starting game dev, 
uh, or if you're just looking to get into stuff or if you're if you're just looking for a project to hack on, you can do so in a way that actually has like a project governance body in place so that you can get used to doing open source contributions, which is fr- frankly, it's a weak spot in a lot of open source projects. They don't really have a good um, onboarding ramp or any sort of way to get people used to contributing to these projects. So uh, so hence dungeons. Uh, you can find it on GitHub. Uh, you can access it directly in the browser. You can run a local version. Yeah, that's that's kind of it. It's pretty neat. And we like to throw uh, mentions to these learning projects it in our is. show because I, we have a lot I of games. I think this is people. a perfect one for Atomic Listen. to just slyly and over the course of time add in more of um, the, the LGC <laughs> RPG <laughs> mechanics. Creep. Yeah, it, it, until it turns creep. into our game. <laughs> like, hey, all right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good to know. Good to see. Uh, and finally, before we get out of here, I, I just wanted to throw this in because, hey, it's always fun to think about what could have been. Chris Chapman posted this, I think, the day before yesterday. It's like on the 20th anniversary of Chapter 11 bankruptcy of Loki Entertainment. Let's do a quick thread on the history of the strange, ignominious uh, company. So, yeah, this just runs down kind of like the history of how it gets started what went on, and we know all the little bits and bobs. Ultimately, we know they just went out of business, and that was very, very unfortunate. But I've always wanted to know. Here's the timeline. 98, company founded. 2001, uh, Entertainment, Loki, Files, Chapter 11. And 2002, the company is officially closed. Um, Co-workers who thought they were employees found out that later that they were contractors and they had to pay their social security taxes that they thought were being taken out. And uh, apparently Draker and his wife kind of disappeared with a chunk of money that ultimately caused everything. Bucket it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, They were were buying like TVs and shit instead of like spending it on game development. This is like, I've been through this because I, I was on this roller coaster ride back in the day because I went through, oh shit, Linux gets all the AAA games now, which, you know, this is something Chris pointed out, uh, more than 20 ports. And these were not like um, games you've never heard of. These were not indie things. Mm. They were Heretic 2, Myth 2. Myth 2 was the first uh, Loki Descent game I had. Three, yeah. yeah, Heavy Gear 2, <laughs> Civilization. Railroad Tycoon. And, yeah. uh, just kind of rocking and rolling, which and a bunch of good stuff came out of it, like SDL and uh, OpenAL and all that fun stuff. That was here's something that genuinely worried me because I I had been on this ride. I went from ah, well, we got a couple of games that like Happy Ping One dot org open source games that we could play with, and boom, just kind of came out of nowhere. You know, sort of like Myth Two, and I'm like, oh shit, I just got all these more games than I can buy from Loki, and it fucking disappeared. It got started, and I just I mentally was. In that phase, like, yeah, we're always just going to get new games for Linux each and every year, like more than Feral was ever putting out. And it went away. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ethan brought up a good point um, in one of the one of the replies to this thread where it's like it, it just goes to show you that regardless of your technical merit or the, the good product you have, one shitty guy at the top can ruin it for everyone. It can. Get anything else? Yeah. No, no. All right. <laughs> so. Uh, I had to think, and then something that genuinely worried me was the steam machines when Valve released them. And we had the initial, oh, this is going to be good. We're going to have a resurgence. Then we got the page. Everyone, do you remember that page? It's like Witcher 3 is coming out. Batman's coming out. And everything Ah, else is coming out. Street Fighter. Uh Bait for the member bot. Everyone got excited. (laughs) I got excited. I'm like, okay, we're back. Let's not fuck this one up. They fucked that one up. Now we're on round three. All all the weight is on this tiny little, not tiny, and it's not really little, but it's handheld system. Mm-hmm. And it's all for Steam because love them or hate them, Steam plays the long game. They've been developing this shit, pushing money into Proton, all the back end stuff. DXVK, D9VK. Drivers, yeah. the, the actual drivers, funding driver development from Lunar G to Collabora to just hiring to, people straight to, up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you think it's re- re- safe? re-engineering shit to run on Vulcan? This third go around to legitimately get our hopes up. I'm like, all right, is this is no, this no, how it's no. going to play out now? Is this, protons just matter of life? But maybe later on, we're going to see a return to form once you realize you can squeeze out some extra performance. I mean, is is it That's safe to get Nicholas excited? That's what was saying. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, with Proton uh, uh, basically taking the brunt of it now. 
maybe Linux will get big enough that people will go, oh, and so I, what if we release a proper Linux version? I tend to listen to old Icky because mm-hmm. he's ridden this ride. He was there. Yeah. I, 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 will, I will say this. If 3D effects has taught us anything this week, never have hope. Wait, wait and see. <laughs> yeah, no. The, actually, looking through this thread and uh, like the details that uh, Chris was posting there, uh, I remember when uh, Ryan uh, came to uh, LWDW and did a show with us. Uh, he was saying, "You can ask me anything. Just don't ask me about Loki. I'm not saying anything about that." I can see why. It was, mm-hmm. I sure should yeah. can see why. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and and you know what? Th- thinking back, this was this was happening in like the late '90s, early 2000s. There was a bit of a boom going on where everyone was running shitty businesses like this, and I, I, it, unfortunately, Loki was just another casualty of it. It was uh, kind so, of like that, man. Um, but I think the moral of this story is uh, everyone working with the AIA Dano is like, "Fuck this, really." <laughs> that, 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 I mean, it's just the windows that held at that point <laughs> <laughs> because that went from oh wouldn't it be neat if we could get Linux on the AN Nano that'd be neat and <laughs> Valve's like hey here's some custom silicon with some RDNA stuff you haven't played we, with. We, yeah. we, we, have mm-hmm. I, we have I and Neo at home it, yeah. except it yeah, was a better it, version it, it already runs uh, Linux and it's got a better GPU and a better CPU and 16 gigs of RAM. And, and I yeah, don't say you. that as anything <laughs> negative for the I and Neo people because I can imagine uh, just sitting there having that Steam, the Gabe Gear launch going, what? You mother. Oh, oh yeah. And like, you, you, you got to real imagine like, oh man, they got custom hardware. We have like some shitty Intel XE that was like some consumer part or like some, uh, bad part or something, which was really awesome. Right up until, uh, right, uh, right. until we get that custom Navi APU. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, maybe the Aya Neo two will, <laughs> but isn't well, that, maybe isn't the that price well, will no, be competitive not, not to jump too heavily into oh. like back with the steam stuff but i i know valve's definitely going to be open to having oh do you think they're going to really genuinely be open to having other people running steam os on their handheld portables probably i don't think they're gonna prevent them, they were but, okay with the first yep. iteration so i don't really see them being against it now well you know <laughs> what i could think being valve looking at going we fucked up by doing that let's try a different strategy Oh no, they fucked up by releasing the Steam Link and undercutting literally everyone else. That's how they fucked up. <laughs> I I I just I just want to point out that if Aya does not name their second console Morpheus and their third console Trinity, they have fucked up. They better call it the Nebuchadnezzar, you peasant. <laughs> the the Aya Smith. The Aya Hugo Evening. <laughs> the weaving and ending. Oh, yes. the, the, the weavening. <laughs> All right. Coming up next, uh, we're throwing chairs at Zusek. You can dance if you want to. You can leave your friends behind. But if they da- don't dance and if they don't dance, then they can't come to the chairquisition. Uh, this week, we're throwing chairs at Jupiter Hell, developed by Chaos Forge, done on a custom engine. You can pick it up for about 25 bucks US. 25 off. They're 20 percent off until the uh, 15th. 25 off. I You've read it here. Tw- I read Guaranteed. 20 and 15th, and I'm a- I combined them to make 25. 25 off what? Don't know. Can't tell you. What is it? Jupiter Hell is a rogue is a turn-based shooter from the depths of cosmic hell, built on a classic rogue-like framework, updated with 3D modern graphics. Rip and tear zombies, demons, and heavy metal monstrosities with chain guns and chainsaws. Like chess, dot 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 with shotguns. So we gotta thank Evolve PR for sending us some keys. I guess let's get into it. Pedro, you liked this game the most, so you get to go first. Oh, can I ask you, what do you consider hot for your NVIDIA CPU. I'm seeing you're like 71, 72. Uh, that is where it caps out, yeah. Because it is doing a very good job of using 100% of the GTX 1080. But yeah, that's, that's on, usually on, where on, it on stops. What? Go. On uh, KDE Neon with the Ryzen 7 3700X doing the processing in the background. Yeah, it, over here, it launched out of the box. It holds 144 at 1080p, but at 2560 by 1440 well, if you saw the stream on Tuesday, it has some issues. Uh, it uses 100% of the GPU doing it, so yeah. Uh, the graphics are the isometric 3D, and they do their job for what it is. Uh, the music is pretty high octane. I like. 
And only X input controllers work, at least on my end. It completely ignored Steam input altogether, and I had to have the controller plugged in before starting the game, otherwise it just didn't work. But it is a roguelike, so you're probably going to be playing it with a keyboard more often than not. As for the fun, yeah. Yeah, it is fun. It, it is a better version of Doom to Roguelike. It is, after all, the sequel without, you know, attacking it too on the end because they got sued by Bethesda at the time. Uh, although I guess nowadays they would be poking Microsoft's lawyers since Microsoft bought them, but yeah. It takes the, uh, the base games of Doom the Roguelike and puts them in an all new 3D engine with a pretty metal soundtrack, if we're being honest. And Doom the Roguelike for me was one of those games that I always installed on every computer that I use regularly, especially like the laptops that I take with me, along with Fallout 2 and now Soapbox Race World. But... I can tell you right now that I will be replacing Doom the Roguelike with Jupiter Hell on every single laptop that can run it, because y it seems to be a bit demanding, go figure. Uh, I do like it a lot, and now that it has its own identity, it's not relying on the Doom franchise, even if it is taking more than a few cues from it. R it can rip and tear, its Pedro. Own it rip and tear, the uh, armors and the way that the Marine looks, and what you're fighting the totally not imps totally not hell knights totally not yeah you got the picture but yeah no good job chaos forge uh, the controller support needs work and um i'm sure uh ven <laughs> will tell you of something else Maybe. that needs work uh, but yeah no for me i have no complaints four chairs oh it's been a long time since yeah. we've seen an omg wtf bbq uh hang on indeed and boom there we go ah oh, hang there, on. there I is i all right. What? No, I'm going to explode in 31 seconds. No. Uh, uh, yeah, on Fedora 34, 64-bit with the uh, R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti. Launches out of the box. It will cause your monitors to blink uncontrollably when full screening. So I cut it into windowed mode. Um, and yeah, make sure your controller is connected. As Pedro mentioned, I had it working with Steam Input, but uh, the uh, hot plug rediscovery thing does not work on this game. Also... Uh, if you're using the kernel level uh, force feedback drivers on your DualShock, this game will make your controller vibrate like a sex toy. Um, yeah, the uh, the tile set is fine. Um, I would like a little bit more of a distinct protagonist. Uh, they It tends to blend in with the background a little too much. So sometimes, sometimes I lose track of them when I'm trying to fight a lot of dudes. Um, and the soundtrack is all right. Pedro thinks it's very metal. I think it's a little too generic metal chugging for my taste. But, you know, your mileage may vary. Uh, as for the fun, I opened the PDA in the game, and I'm curious why my mailbox is in var mail root. But you know what? That's questions for another day. The game itself is pretty fun. Uh, there's an emphasis on cover and running to get better ranged advantage. Um, that's emphasized in the weapon stats because you have, like, maximum range, minimum range, and then effective range. Uh, which is going to be very, very important to not get murdered from across the map or to murder things coming at you from across the map in a fast enough rate so that they can get at you and kill you. Um, one thing I am a little lukewarm about is the uh, waiting mechanic. You have the option of just like letting the clock advance and letting the dudes show up. But what that basically does is it turns almost every fight into uh, run in, kite the enemies, or run out, and then find a good vantage point and then wait them out and let them let yourself murder them. Uh, it gets a little that strategy becomes a little less ten tenable once you start getting more. AOE stuff, but not by much. Um, still, I think it's a pretty solid roguelike. Um, I argue they, I'd argue maybe they priced it a little too high at 30 Canadian. Um, but if you're a fan of the genre, definitely pick it up when it goes on sale. I'll give it three chairs. It's solid fun. Nice. All right. My own medicine. Here we go because, uh, yeah, I get to go last. Pseudo service light DM restart. Um, it's been a while since I've had to, uh, well, I've had a game cock up my X session, but here we are. You know, I tried it with Vulcan and OpenGL. OpenGL full screen to the correct monitor. Vulcan, not so much. It slammed over here to the one in the far left. I was able to window the Vulcan and move it over to the correct monitor, and it did full screen correctly. Then I cut on the FPS counter and um, played the tutorial. You know, I noticed I was dropping into like mid 40s. So I went to dial in the resolution. Well, dial it down. I was going to do 1080p on my Threadripper 1920X with a 2060 running Debian. 11. Yeah, hold on to something before you do that. OpenGL or Vulkan, changing the resolution in full screen jacks up all the things. Nope. Seriously, 100% fuck that. I went back to give it a second shot. Allow me to demonstrate what I was met with. That 
it took my show notes monitor in the middle, moved that to the far left, and it managed to like double screen itself. You'll notice not one, but two FPS counters floating on my primary display. No way out of it. Steam couldn't kill it. I had to drop to a TTY in order to unjack that nonsense. Trash Cat was not amused. Um, tap the Proton button. You know what? Everything worked as expected. But uh, what's the deal with the high and medium performance wise? Because at 2160p, it went from 47 to 72 when I dropped it down to medium and visually really couldn't tell the difference. But let's talk about the fun because I kind of remember Doom the roguelike being more roguelike, maybe? I don't know. Jupiter Hell is described as chess with shotguns, but for me, it feels like a twin stick shooter that was smacked rather lightly with the uh, turn based stick. Um, you know, it turns out like making a shooty PPU game top down roguelike and turn base is about two slices away, two little slices of sun dried tomato away from a nope sandwich. Didn't have a fun time with it. Um, didn't hate it, but I was like, eh, it's a thing. I can play it. Now, forcing me to drop to that TTY twice didn't help things. Passable soundtrack, though. I'm kind of halfway between Jordan and Pedro on this. I mean, even when I was watching Pedro live stream, and I was like, yeah, all right, it's going to bump in a little soundtrack. Price is a little high, but. Yeah, if you're on Debian 11, you might want to watch out. I can't give it a passing score when I have to go over to Proton just to play the game. Do you think that, that that's fair, guys? I mean, maybe, maybe not. I, I, I think mean, I, I, I would, I would expect button, things to run. Eh. I here's here, <laughs> I, I let know. me see if I can <laughs> give my case to everyone watching at home. That the second time it did that when I was just running through that would have been when I refunded it. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. You you would think that shit running on Debian should you know be the like the sort core of, of it. Yeah, right. But you know, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe maybe you need more modern technology in your well, Linux. Yeah, but that's why SteamOS three is going to be based on Arch. <laughs> this is one of the things though. Debian eleven's <laughs> newer shit than uh, what's Pedro running. Uh, yeah, I'm running on twenty oh four effectively. Yeah. So. <laughs> so maybe that's then, then maybe maybe your technology is too advanced i don't know maybe you know what here's my other theory possibly it's allergic to pink desk fans it's very possible <laughs> very well could um, be the actual issue. if you if if you are also allergic to pink uh desk fans then send us some hate mail and we might read it next week but for now i'm sorry miss freeman If that wasn't a big enough show for you, then I don't know what is. Um, well, I, guess I suppose the one where we talked about the Game Gear for like 30 minutes nonstop, that what? was pretty big. What? You think that's <laughs> over? <laughs> it's never no, over. No, no, no. <laughs> round, well, that was round zero, I suppose. Yeah. It was the announcement. Uh, so this is like there, there's going to be more. <laughs> But yeah, if you'd like to let us know if uh, you'd like longer shows or shorter shows, shows, shows. yes, uh, you can absolutely do that by going to LinuxGameCast.com and hitting the contact button. Let us know uh, exactly how you'd like Jordan to dress up for the next week, because that is a thing that you can do, whether or not he decides to do it. That's that's very much I, up to him. I, I mean, I mean, like, I, I have like very limited wardrobe, so I'll see what I can do. <laughs> but yeah, just make sure you read the uh, caveats at the top, especially if you want us to have a look at the thing that you're doing, like a game or some such. Because if you don't, well, then you just get you just get made fun of. That that that's kind of how it goes. But we only have it? one nice little <laughs> juicy bit to close out this week mm -hmm. and you might have guessed you might have guessed everyone's favorite wrong pedro mateus uh was <laughs> actually both i think you guys were both wrong because i, I think uh jordan uh reaffirmed this wrongness during I, the show I, I i brought i brought it up i just quoted the article if the article was wrong i may have yeah <laughs> ladies and gentlemen <laughs> this comes from, from test man. man and test man says hey Turns out Pedro's friend Ross was in Half-Life 2 update, and there is no info, as in none, zero, about him being in Remaster. What What is Remaster, Pedro? It's uh, the Half-Life 2 Remaster uh, community-made mod that is, or I guess standalone thing, that will be on Steam, and uh, apparently Valve is okay with that. We talked about it last week. And yeah, it's well, made I mean, by the same on, people. Man. Come who, on, they're, they're fine with people making Left 4 Dead Three. 
I mean, <laughs> I mean I, clearly, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, it it was made by the same people who made Half Life Two Update, and um, yeah, Jordan mentioned last week that um, Ross Scott, uh, the uh, the voice the commu- of. Uh, so okay, I, I I went and checked the article. So the Ross Scott is on the commentary; he's not actually in the game. That's where I fucked up. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> it it is it is mentioned in the article about in, in in the actual description that the project has that Ross Scott shows up in the commentary, not in the actual game proper. So. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> so for those of you at home, like, what is a Ross Scott? Uh, he Freeman's is mind. the voice of a uh, Freeman's mind. Is that still going on? Does he still do that? Yeah, or yeah. what? Yeah, the the the, the these uh, move. He's on to Half Life Two now. Oh. I'll have to go yep. check that out. See, I was very fortunate not even know that uh, Freeman's Mind was a thing until it was done. So I was like, oh. Right, yeah. yeah. Cause there, there, there was like a good like five, six months between episodes sometimes. <laughs> so having the entire thing. <laughs> yeah, he keeps is, apologizing is nice. whenever he does live streams. He does a live stream like every month. It's just like, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's a video coming. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I, 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 I mean, no, I have infinite, <laughs> infinite. Cause I'm trying to, I've never played through the original half life. Um, but I'm working my way through, um, the road to Zen, which was the half life, you know, Zen. And yeah, I could, so, yes. yeah, I, I'm going back and editing the video, just like clean it up. I'm like, shit. Yeah. There's, there's like two minutes of content in this outside of me going, but what am I supposed to do? Which isn't very funny. So I, I, I got feels, <laughs> <laughs> like funny commentary and something that that takes some work, man. It takes some planning. Yeah, uh, I, I remember like, watching a video about his process. Apparently, he like does about three second chunks and then like tries to think of something funny to say, and that's just the process of. And he actually uh, introduces a lot of custom content uh, for certain sections where he doesn't think that his interpretation of uh, Gordon Freeman would do something like that. So he tries to like get out to the community. It's like, can you make me a mod that does this? And on the last episode of um, uh, Freeman's Mind 2, there's actually an entire new chunk of map that was made by a community modder. That's That looks very good. Very good job. Okay. So mm-hmm. b- before we go into Freeman's Mind spoiler territory, we might want to cut here. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I was having a good time watching Jordan highlight chairs. I'm like, what are you trying to say to me? Is it code? <laughs> yes, it is. You haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> Ladies then and we're gentlemen, all clicky, clicky. I do believe that is really going to be code on that bombshell because we got to cue the music. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us. I know uh, these have been kind of long, but hey, bonus soda if you're listening to it or watching it. Great background music. And uh, if you're a patron, you get the like four hour version of this, which is going to be very confusing like for the next hour because we're going to be killing zombies. But you also get the video version, so it might make a little bit more sense. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, just at Vinstone on Twitter. That's where I'm at. And I'm still hanging out on our Mastodon at mast.linuxgamecast.com. Button press. I'm Jordan Spung. You can check out my brand new series, Freeman's Butt, where I play through Half-Life and make fart noises. <laughs> Uh, follow me on Twitter at the Burning Fool or twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. Maybe I'll have time to stream now that I'm not playing Nurse all the time. All right. So I'll go do that. <laughs> you know, uh, if you actually do uh, <laughs> a series called Freeman's Butt, I'll watch it. I am Pedro Matheus. Uh, you can find me enjoying all manner of uh, fart jokes on Twitter at Unaccounted4. Y- do it. Just do it. <laughs> Credit. Do it to Pedro's butt. <laughs> I, I read that as Breastmaster for a second, and I got very confused. <laughs> See, look, I, fixed, well, I finally, after three weeks, I got us all fixed in the videos. Oh, my God. I we remember. can see our faces. Yeah. And now we can see your lovely names. We've got to thank our Patreons, our advisors, Omegas, and our Theron. We also got to thank our executive producers. You know them. Aldius, Barb Ramp, Scott Michaud, this Fox Dog, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer 7, Holy Toast, and Kahaku. What about Chicago Kicks Ass, fans. man? we got Dog Thing and yeah, Abstraction. Little, little abstraction. Got some sea monsters. Jack B, Bruno the Page, Riders X Machina, Paul, Veritanuda, Justin, and... Frosty Frost and Claw, KY Linux, Death Notes, Nova K, mm-hmm. Basil, Chad, Romero. Uh, how about Chris, Steven, Jill? Hey, Steve. Are you listening? <laughs> Benjamin, <laughs> Boom2.Wad. Another Steve, but Steven D, Dirty Dean, and back. Yeah, that's right, Pedro. Your turn. He's back. And of course, the chairlings like Jason, Lord Mocha, Joel, Iris, AJ, Dusk Geek, Brock, Kai Linux, Giovanni, Joanna, Sherry Vig, 
Michael, Todd, Nubbin, Joel, Reginald, Mr. Alert, Simcha, uh, Stephen B, Ryan, Linux Noob, Ertain, Jolly, uh, Miguel, Text is getting Dementors. so tiny, can you read it? <laughs> Timer. Daniel, uh, Belric, Squintarder. Minus Nine, Squintarder. Monica, and I couldn't get to the last zen. one. <laughs> that was your moment of zen, ladies and gentlemen. No die in a fire. We'll see you next week. Peace. I Peace. am John Stewart now. What's wrong with you? You've changed, man. <laughs> no, you said peas, like uh, country goodness right. and green penis. Fairness. I'm allergic Hell to peas. Five dudes. <laughs>